somebody do a pre-show host banjo. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Kentucky. You so are in Kentucky. There there is. Is. You can definitely <laughs> get somebody. There you go. Um, today we dropped Adler off at school, but it's the start of summer camp school, like because it's summer. Sure. But it's now they're they're calling it camp and right. so we made and the it must terrible- be so different in preschool between oh, you the rigors of know. academia and then the totally summer different. camp exactly totally now different. now it just involves water play and guests that come <laughs> with like sea creatures and stuff yeah um but we made the terrible mistake of saying to adler it's so exciting you're going to camp are you ready you're gonna go to camp you're going to camp and then we got to school and he looked at me and he goes school <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, uh, but it's yeah. camp. Like it's, it's, it's going to be fun stuff. And he was, he was, first of all, we get out and the kid next to us is getting out of the car screaming oh, bloody murder. No. And so Adler's looking at him like, oh, you must know something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, oh, they're, no. they're taking this off. And the so butcher. he's walking to the class. Like, why are we doing this? And he's in a new classroom this year. So I had oh, to take okay. him to his new classroom and all the kids from the classroom were, were in the middle of their walk to the, to the playground to go play. So he was like thrown in the middle of it. Anyway, he burst into tears and didn't want Aww. me to drop him off this oh, morning no. and i was like mm, this is not the way i like to start my day oh, no. yeah i do I the same so thing bad. when sue brings me to the airport so don't even worry that doesn't change by the way i'm like i don't want to go yeah <laughs> same thing <laughs> she's like it's like okay sorry it's my husband sorry 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 and everyone's like looking at me like oh god i hope i'm not sitting next to that guy yeah sorry oh man Yikes. all right welcome to pod meets world i'm danielle fischel i'm will Friedel. and i am Ryder strong i'm really excited to talk about this episode it this is, is called episode. father knows less episode 103 uh the synopsis is that alan wakes Corey up late at night to watch the end of a baseball game Corey then fails a test the next day and mr feeney won't let him retake it yes um another is, William Russ heavy episode. Yes. Uh, Rusty and, just killing it. How good is he? Like how He's these so are good. things I never remembered from working with him, from ever watching the show back in the day. Is like, man, thank God for Rusty and Bill because they well, were of, amazing. I mean, part of being on being on a show is that you often um you, you get attracted to like the sort of unusual uh, or bigger parts of an episode you know like when we're all there rehearsing all week we, we we're most concerned with who gets the biggest laughs or right. what yeah. attracts the most attention for that episode you know like if if will if you're in a lobster suit that's what we're going to be talking about that episode yeah, not right, the right, fact yeah. that like rusty's just nailing like a great understated role as a father right do you know what i mean yeah, 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 yeah. and so it's so interesting now to be able to look back and appreciate those things that at the time we just sort of took for granted of course yeah. because and, and that's just the nature of all tv i think you just you forget you're like oh yeah our concerns are not the, you know the same as what an audience is going to be getting out of it like well, we're also be, watching our age now right so it's like we're looking at the characters that are around our age as opposed to like i identify with the 12 year old it's like no you now identify i don't have children thank you, thankfully but you identify with like you know rusty's what 40 41 when he's doing the show so it's like that's now i think we at, figured he was 42 he was 42 exactly he's exactly yeah. right there age. you go so it's like mm -hmm. that's what you're now watching you're kind of that's so it's it's you don't watch that when you're 15 16 years old it's like i'm not wow, right. wow rusty's performance as the dad was spellbinding <laughs> <laughs> said none of us at but 12 now, years old yeah now it really is it's great. something else he's amazing he's so casual but like yeah. cool yeah he was the casual cool dad yeah, yeah. super casual super cool yeah. but like very present you could tell he was like like a present father yeah just awesome so, so this what's also, with these sandwiches that they're making in the beginning? Hmm, I wasn't quite sure. The ginormous <laughs> bologna sandwiches? Is the, is the joke that that's what they want or that they don't know how to make sandwiches? It's that, that that's what they want. Because later we see them eating the sandwiches that they make where they put the chips right. on the sandwich. Which, by the way, do either of you put chips in your sandwich? I do. Mm. So good. Yeah, it's the best. It's to, the best. The best things ever. Yeah. So, um they're making the sandwiches later at night and they're making them the way they wanted them. Uh, right. Tons of meat and chips in the sandwich. But this was to go to school in the morning they were making it. No, it's a sad, I think it's a, it's a weekend. No, no, but, but don't when we start when they're in the kitchen, they're yeah. making the sandwiches. They're going to see the Blue Angels. Oh, that's right. That's right. what it is. So they're, they're going not to going see, to They're school. going to yeah. see the planes. This, so this episode started with me writing wise 
with very like for the first time there was four or five lines where it was like wow those are really sitcom-y <laughs> okay like yes. the um hey hey mom manly food hey right. core momly food it's like what like that's so sitcom like so yeah. 90s family sitcom well i would say in general this scene just also plays up the gender stereotypes so heavily yeah and leans yeah. into them in a way that Hopefully it's kind of faded with time, but yes. certainly, you know, when he makes the threat about going to ballet lessons, yeah. because yes. dad's not going to be around. I was like, oh, that sucks, man. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. And I don't, you know, I mean, I, I think it was in early 90s. That was something people said, you know, like yeah. and nowadays wouldn't fly. But um, yeah, this episode at the start certainly had a little feel of like a home improvement vibe. Yes. <laughs> like totally it was. Did. That's exactly. That's exactly what I felt. Where it's like the, the men are going to be men and the women got to stay and be women. But you, you know, better than us because you're the mom like it's like it was so kind you're of right home improvement is exactly the reference yep. because that was always his shtick right yep. tim yeah. allen's it was always based on tim allen's uh, stand-up which was rooted in let's talk about the differences between men and women exactly and he's still doing it i mean that yeah. show he had you know 10 years ago was the last man on earth it's like the same 10 joke, years ago i think that thing. ended like last year no yes it was the, the last man it was on for a long time yeah. i know but um but yeah, it came out about 10 years ago. I mean, I don't know. The start but, of it, yeah. He, but still, he's still playing the same shtick. And and, it, and we have to remember that was a huge hit show. Yes, at, the, um, at this time. And part of that's where I, one of my first jobs was on Home Improvement. Um, and Betsy Randall was a big Home yeah. Improvement recurring character. That's right. Uh, she yeah. Yeah. That's where she, that think, was her first. By the way, you know, uh, and, Last Man Standing, the last episode was 2021. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I should always wow. trust you when it comes to TV. <laughs> it's TV, knowledge. sir. It's TV, sir. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, and I think it's, it's, I, I was one of the, I remember, I don't think I network tested, but I definitely went back to producers a gazillion times to be one of the kids on, on home improvement. Mm -hmm. um, like one of the main, like one of the main kids? Yeah, yeah like up for one of the main kids, you know, because oh, okay. like, I've said this before in the show, when you're a kid actor, you know, there's only so many of you <laughs> that, right, right, that right. Yeah. keep auditioning for parts. And so I was like, I remember being very close to getting a part on Home Improvement and then um, and then coming to guest star on the Halloween episode, which was super fun. I got to be a sort of pseudo Sean Hunter in a leather jacket, being a brat. I was always cast as a brat, by the way. That was like my go to role. <laughs> and and then, you know, I think in part that and I think back then, too, if you were on a network uh, the 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 executives would remember you for other things. Oh yeah, sure. you know, like the yeah. word would sort of get out. And so I think like part of the reason that Betsy Randall and I both ended up on Boy Meets World was because of Home Improvement. Yeah, because we had an association with it was a Disney show, a Touchstone Television show, it's the same pr production company. Mm -hmm. Or uh, studio, and then the same network. Um, so there was a lot of exchange between those two worlds. Well, if you think about it, it's so it's it makes sense. You've already mm. been approved. You've already gone through yeah. the entire process. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. already auditioned you. You've already screen tested. Yep. You've already proven yourself. We've already seen that you were funny. It may not have worked out for that show, but we already right. know this person checks all these boxes. Let's bring them in instead yep. of starting from scratch. So yeah. it makes sense. It's actually really smart. Um, it doesn't make it easier when you're trying to break into the industry, but no. Nope. Um, but it, it is a time saver. Yeah. So, yeah, we're in the kitchen. Corey and Alan are making sandwiches. They're going to watch the Navy planes. That's right. Um, they're talking about their manly food, which is just chips and yeah. lots of bologna. Lots of there was a nice, you do. Yeah. They tried to make that a thing. They tried to they make that a thing. To, and there they was a couple it. things I, I they tried to make a thing. I remember you saying that last yep. time, but I totally didn't remember. And then I heard it here. I was like, there it is. That's yep. right. They tried to make yep. that a thing. They tried to make the, the the thing you mentioned, the I am whatever boy. boy. They tried to make that a thing. Yeah. There's a couple yep. times they tried to have a running gag, which just was like, yeah, it's not really working. I noticed in this too, that this is um, a cold open that tracks from the kitchen into the living room and then back into the back. kitchen. And we used to do that all the time on Boy meets world we've done it a couple of times in the episodes that we've watched thus far and we don't do that anymore in tv like or maybe if at least not on the shows i'm directing almost all the shows i direct now cold open Isolated is in sets. one scene yep. and yep. 
and somebody may leave, but they leave. You don't see where they go. And then they come back. Uh, no, the sitcoms, sitcoms in the 80s and 90s always had those swinging doors. Yes. Yeah. You know, those wonderful swinging doors. And that was a big part. It's like, dude, let's have a change in lots of movement. It's really cool. It, it is. more theatrical, really. And it's it opens theatrical. up everything. It opens up the whole set. It I feels mean, so yeah. much more natural yeah. um, yes. to see him, you know, walk through that swinging door. And you get the decision then, is the door going to stay open or is it going to stay closed? Are we using it? Do we want to see into the living room? Do we not want to see into the living yeah. room? So I thought... I mean, sorry to talk about that, no, low, no, but it, it gives no. it such a nice, flowy, Flow. family, real yep. life dynamic that we yep. do, I don't see enough, frankly. Yeah. So um, uh, In we go comes into Willie, Willie Garson, oh. the late great Le- Willie Garson, yes, oh as Lenny amazing. Spinelli, and such a nice man, so yeah. amazing. So for those of you who don't know, Willie Garson passed away uh, just last year, right? Twenty, yeah. yeah, it was either twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one. Um, yeah, of cancer. Um, and he, you know, we he had come back to do Girl Meets World, too. Mm-hmm. So I had recently reconnected with him. And it's funny because looking at it, you know, going back to this first appearance, I, weirdly, Lenny, or Willie and I became friends really this at this time. Like, yeah. he and I connected at this age. So he was probably, what, 25 or maybe? Wow. A little older. Do you think he was that young? Yeah. I, who knows? I mean, again, trying to judge the age when you're a kid. I would say he was yeah. under 30. So he was born probably. in 1964. So this is 93. Okay, so, so he was 30. 29. Yeah. 29, yeah. 20, okay. so, yeah. So here he was, a 29-year-old, and I was math, a 13-year-old. And he only did a few episodes this first season, but we bonded for whatever reason. I mean, I, I think Willie was just one of those guys who bonded with everybody. Like he, he did. was, just, he was so he nice. was a great onset yeah, presence. He, he was so yep. he was so funny and mm-hmm. witty and like sharp and just a great actor and a great character actor could do anything. Um, and yeah, it's just crazy when I look back at this now to see like the age difference and be like, oh, but I felt like we were equals right. <laughs> back then. Right. I, rem- you know, and when we reconnected on Girl Meets World, we hadn't seen each other for years, but it was like no time had passed, and we just yeah. immediately started shooting the shit backstage, telling the same jokes, telling stories. He was a great storyteller and had had so much experience in the industry always. Um, and he actually grew up with um, with Michael Jacobs. Yeah, yes. went back. Yeah, they were friends. So so Michael brought him onto this show. Um, Early on, and then of course he came back to marry Corey and Topanga. Right? Uh, Didn't he come back another time? Character. Didn't he come back three different? I think times? he was three different characters. Yeah, he was three different characters. I forget what the second one was. Yeah, I'll I know he married Corey up. and Topanga, and he was Lenny Spinelli, who you could tell they were also trying to make a thing. Yes. Like Lenny Spinelli was because like he did a couple episodes in a row, and it was like, oh, Lenny's going to join the cast, and then you never saw Lenny again. Um, well, so, I remember Willie saying to me that that Michael told him. Yeah, it, you know, they, they, they only have so many slots for regulars. Right, uh, right, it, right, right. If we hadn't have already filled all of our slots by this season, you know. And also, he told me that Michael already told him we have we have uh, Minkus. We already have a sort of nerd character. Right. And, and the show can only handle so much, which is true. It, it was sure. interesting that Lenny comes in as this, like, hyper nerd. And, it, you know, yeah. it was like... It, it, it's an interesting thing that 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 you have Minkus and the and Lenny sort of playing the same role, which is like this foil for the other characters, you know, for the 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 so called the, the more socially like mm, Lenny's so weird, Minkus is so weird, right? Um, yeah. But you know, Willie is great. Like I thought, Willie is he's it, hysterical, but it's just it's a pretty over the top character. It is, oh, but yeah. you also have to keep in mind what is our lead in at the time and what is their biggest bread and butter. One of ABC's biggest bread and butters is. Is, is, fo- uh, is family, family matters. matters. Yeah. Right. So Where Urkel is just so like Urkel's huge, but then on another planet as far then, as his character. Right? Absolutely. But then that then worked against us, which is apparently the reason why they didn't bring Lee back after the first season was because of Urkel. Where they went, yeah. we've got Urkel, we can't go Urkel to another big nerd character, and then the right. Minkus character was gone. So it was it was started first where it was like, ooh, nerds, that's what everybody's doing now, let's do that. And then it was kind of like, no, this one took off and the other ones didn't, so yeah, it's let's get rid of the rest of them. It's super interesting to consider, I mean, it, just in what we've been talking about, in one scene, the, you know... The, the bits of other shows, the sort of ecosystem of of 90s television that you have to cater to as, as a show. You know, we have to, because we're trying to get the home improvement audience. Sure. We're trying to get the Family Matters audience, yeah. right? And we're a fledgling show to make those little nods, to, to make an audience feel comfortable by bringing in a character that is a sort of stock character that somewhat recognizable for them from another TV show that they've already enjoyed. That's a really good move yeah. writing wise yeah. you know and creatively um so it's interesting that 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 we are making those sort of 
little nudges. But, uh, and but, that's part of what was so important about ratings is you could see, well, what was the rating of the show before you and how much yeah. of that audience did you keep? Yep. So what right. was the drop off? What was new? Like they could tell everything. Well, new people turned in just for Boy Meets World. This much of the Family Matters audience stuck around. And so you right. were not just trying to get as many eyeballs on your show as possible. You were trying to retain as much of the viewers yes. from the yeah. show before. And, and you could know the demographics too. You could yeah. know the exactly. race, the gender, the age. Yep. And you'd have to know what the, you know, which ones were the, the ones who buy the most products. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. the advertisers want to advertise. Like, do they care about kids as much, you know, as they care about those kids' parents sticking around? Or, right. you know, it's super yeah. interesting. Yeah. It also shows you, though, how one little tweak changes an entire show. I mean, you talk about home improvement. Home Improvement is the show about Tim Allen, but had they made it about the the exact same show, but through the eyes of the middle kid, it's Boy Meets World, and it's on right. Friday nights, as opposed to being the number one show in the country at the time and on a, a Tuesday night primetime show. Right. So, right. I mean, that was, Home Improvement and Boy Meets World are essentially kind of the same, mm -hmm. just from different points of view, and mm -hmm. what, but so one of them became just a family show, and the other became a giant mega hit. Um, so you just see those little tweaks and everything changes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, um, the second character Willie played was Mervyn from Merrill Lynch in season four, Mr. Matthews quit his all. unfulfilling job at the supermarket. And with an assist from his loving wife, the family winds up buying the local outdoor supply shop in so town. That's when he makes oh, that. I remember that's that. when he yeah. makes that. Then when it becomes clear that overly concerned Amy is terrible at selling camping supplies to strangers, they look to hire a new employee. Garson very briefly returns to the series in the memorable episode Janitor Dad as one of the many potential job seekers. And it's immediately clear that he has no idea what to do with any of the store's equipment. He also appears in the episode's post-credits tag, revealing he previously worked at Merrill Lynch. Wow, I don't remember that at you all. You could have just read something from yep. a completely different television show exactly. that had nothing to do Same. with it. Same this episode. Yeah, Hawkeye and BJ. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I have no recollection of that. Yeah, I don't so either. Different. I almost feel like I wasn't. I must not have been in that episode, but I. No, I, I, I was bet you were. I bet you you were. I we just don't were. remember it. But that's the thing. I think at that point, the 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 storylines were separated so much between the A and B storyline yeah. that we literally probably weren't even reading that half of the script after the tape. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's you know, we just true. read our scenes and rehearse for our scenes, and that's where it's going to get yeah. really interesting for us to do this rewatch. This is. I was thinking exactly the same thing because it's like we're at the beginning where they all still made such a huge impact because we're all starting, we're doing the show, and we're all together, and this is the coolest thing. And then at the very end, they all made a big impact because the show's ending. It's the middle where it's going to get muddled, where yeah. we're going to be like, I don't remember this at yeah. all. All. Seasons three, four, five, and six. Exactly. <laughs> Where it's just like, what? I mean, you just read that. I remember I would have sworn that the, the outdoor store was like season six. Right, yeah, season like, four, I thought apparently. that was way at the end. Like, yeah. And well. then, of course, he was the minister who married Corey and Topanga. Very, so, yeah. yeah, he played three different roles. So awesome. he's fantastic and wonderful. We love him to death. Actually, and he married much. Harold and Mervyn. What, what, no, what were their <laughs> oh, names? right, it right, was, right. Um, Ugh, I don't I remember. I can't either because because Eric steals the 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 wedding for them. So Myra Myra and Harold. Myra and Harold is okay. who he what, married. That's who he what did married. Willie play on Girl Meets World? Do you remember Danielle? Um, did he play Lenny Spinelli, or did he come back as any one of these characters, or just no, came on as a completely he was a new, completely different? They always character. brought him on as something. Oh, that's though. funny. Yeah, that's which is great. Which bit. is actually yeah. kind of great. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't remember. I'll fi we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, All right. So after the awful. Uh, sexist ballet or homophobic ballet yes. lesson uh, joke <laughs> yeah so then we uh, move, we move into, the into the no no we're still in oh yeah this is when yeah the ballet oh the horror the lenny spinelli oh the horror i thought that was just <laughs> All right. oh the horror he, the, yeah he's got that kind of mr matthews like it was very strange yeah and then we get the ballet joke which like you said just does not yeah uh doesn't work yeah doesn't age well it's not it it doesn't have it no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I grew up with the ballet. It was like, oh, okay. Fine. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the cold open, and now we're into our our credits. That still, every time I watch them, I'm like, this this song opening is a ride at Disneyland. Wow, it's, it is. It is um, yeah. really crazy. Uh, and remember when we used to do all the. Um, the parades. Oh, the Hollywood they, Christmas Parade. The Hollywood Christmas and Parade. And they just keep playing the play Christmas Parade. The yeah, opening that was song. our second season. The opening of the second season, we got invited to the Hollywood Christmas Parade, which became kind of a tradition for Ben and I. We would always do the the Hollywood Christmas Parade. You know, they would invite a bunch of actors and people on TV shows um, to parade through downtown Hollywood on floats. And it's actually, I mean, it's actually, it sounds like kind of 
big and world famous because of the name Hollywood Christmas. But the reality is it's a very local tradition. It's a it's something that is for the people that actually live in Hollywood, uh, you know, not like tourists coming to town. It's not the uh, Parade and, of the Roses in Pasadena. It's no, not like that. This kind is a of size, very yeah. small local thing, but it's super fun and weird. And, it be- and we had a float for Boy Beats World where the, our theme song was on loop. And we had Ugh. to do the parade route mm. for two hours, waving to the audience. You guys. Will, I don't think, were you there that year? I don't think you were there for some reason. Me? Me? Will, yeah. Were you there? I've never done it. Oh. Okay, yes. Yeah, I, I don't literally think you were there. never did it. But no. that year it was uh, Danielle, Ben, me, Rusty, Betsy, and um, Tony had just joined the cast. And he was definitely there. So whatever. It was part of the second season. It was the December of the second season. We did the Hollywood Christmas parade. And th- I've, we, you guys, we had already moved on from this theme song. It but was. This is, it was a nightmare. It was I remember just so like, crazy making. Yeah. Well, it is. It's you're right. It's right. It's, it's listening to yeah. Well, I it's listening to it's a small like world over and, over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's that same that kind experience. of thing. Yes. Yikes. Okay, sorry to bring us back, but... No, bring us back. Willie Garson, how did I forget this? This just shows you what a terrible memory I have. Willie Garson on Girl Meets World returned in the episode Girl Meets Popular. She, he was a, he plays Harrison Miller, a cutthroat lawyer, lawyer who worked at the same firm as Topanga. And when the firm attempts to shut down right. the bakery run by a sweet old lady... Um, a conflicted Topanga reaches back in time to find her old teenage self. So this is like, that's so it was episode your episode. episode. It was my <laughs> it was episode. Your episode. Yeah, it's when I it. flashed back to, I wore the same, the Topanga and dress. The they put, I put the your... lipstick on my face and I had wow. the bangs. It was like, I was, oh, I was shadowing that episode. It was right before I directed my first episode. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, so have next a, week we'll be doing the girl meets world rewatch. Yeah. I uh, don't remember any of those either. So <laughs> apparently. We'll, we'll do that too. Wow. Uh, so we get the opening and then we are in Corey and Eric's bedroom. And this is where Alan wakes up Corey to watch the rest of the baseball game with him. Perfect opportunity to have the big brother join him on the couch to watch the baseball game. Oh yeah. Well, I was watching this with my wife and she's like, you know, it's so funny. We're a bunch of episodes in and Alan doesn't realize he has two sons. <laughs> Um, cause that's what it's like. It's yeah. just like, Hey, Corey, come and be my favorite kid. And then the way out is like, you know, uh, Oh yeah. By the way. Hey, Eric, do you want to come? <laughs> I think your name's Eric. Do you want to come downstairs and watch the, the baseball game as well? It's just, we had not yet established that Eric was important in the show no. in any way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah. guess, it, I guess it could be played that you weren't a, that your character wasn't a baseball fan. So he, he went to Corey specifically cause Corey was a big baseball fan, but the first no, season the first you're taking episode, him to the game. The first yeah, episode right. is about taking me. No, this was Eric. Eric is not really established. Well, but you were in any supposed way. to be into girls while Corey's still into sports. You yeah, know, I think that I, was kind of the distinction. But. It was, yeah, but it was what I mean. It's like, all right, we, yeah. he, they obviously had to. Ha- it seemed like such an afterthought where it's like, oh, that's right, I should invite Eric too. <laughs> it, did, it, was, it did feel like it that. was. I mean, again, so it was. It, it is what it is at this point, though. With the show, it's it's a Ben heavy show i mean it was ben's core ben's boy yeah so yeah. we're all still trying to find our characters but it was uh yeah that, my <laughs> just hearing my wife say that was very funny i was like oh yeah he doesn't know he has two kids he's got two sons <laughs> so then we go down to the living room alan and Corey are eating their chips on their sandwiches and uh they're watching the baseball game and of course drinking their cola cola no, of course. cola, cola drink is, cola yeah, drink so yeah. prominent I mean, so, is that still a thing or do shows now just show brands, right? They just no. show brands nowadays. No, not, they certainly, still certainly not so. kids shows. No, we yeah. still Greek everything. Big shows, maybe because like Coke will sponsor the Big Bang Theory or something like that, maybe. Right. But I think the rest of them are you're still like it's cola. I mean, it was always the the cereal even on Seinfeld until later when they started to really it was always Odie's. That's right. Where it was just like, that's what you would always have. You'd have the Odie cereal. And instead of, you know, it's like you couldn't say it was like Malk. Do either of you guys remember how much hatred Michael had for this, uh, the paper bags that you brought home from the grocery store that didn't make the sound? Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah, they yeah. look like crap. They, they look terrible. Spot. They look and you can tell fake. that they're not. Oh, I see them in movies and kids shows and, and I'm always, I, it's one of those visual yeah. things that, 
But I wonder, is that just an insider thing? Or do does everybody notice that? I no, know. I think it's an insider thing. Like, do you get triggered when you see every kid's show or every movie with kids where they go to school, they all have that same Posters. folder mm. or the same folder that they're carrying yeah. that we always had for, for Boy Meets World. It was like a yellow, yellow folder. Yellow with it's like, a, like a generic sport looking yes, thing, someone like running. sports. Yeah. yeah, it was. That's <laughs> that's what it was. We, oh, so I know I, which one you're talking about. Yeah, and yeah. Just, every time I see that, I'm like, oh, God, they got You can generic. even see the same posters in the back of yes. classrooms oh, yeah. all the time. That was yeah, another thing funny. Michael made a big deal about was like, yep. please take these things off the wall. Give me real looking. Yeah. You know, so I want- maybe we should explain just in case. So paper bags like brown paper bags make a lot of noise. And yeah. so in films and film and television, you can't have the crinkling sound of the bags. So the alternative were these cloth plastic cloth bags that look like brown paper bags but don't actually make any of the noise but they don't have the right sheen they reflect yeah. light differently so you can always spot them so yep. now that we've told you dear now listener, you'll notice now, now every them. time you watch a movie or a tv show from the 80s or the 90s they've kind of gone out of fashion because they actually don't show brown paper bags anymore um but you you'll notice it the brown paper bags just don't quite look right yeah it, yeah and, and they don't feel great either they're like soft no. and kind no, of no i hated them yeah, yeah. And no you're one always liked them. unpacking them and packing because it's like you got to do you, if it's got a match you walk in you p- put mm-hmm. it down you unpack it then you pack it again you walk out you do it by the third take you're like i don't want to do this anymore please don't make me do <laughs> yeah this. this is terrible uh okay so yeah that that was just a little memory that popped up for me um yeah. so there's some father-son bonding but Corey looks at him and says thank you for waking me up this is better than going to watch the blue angels very any sweet. day very, very sweet very moment. sweet moment. very sweet moment. that kind of the, the look that that ben gives him is great it's very natural very real just kind of looking at his dad like this is awesome that's that's really cool yeah it's cute uh, and then the next day we're in Feeney's classroom and Minkus wrote an essay uh, as part of his answer just for fun. <laughs> uh, another joke that just isn't funny these days is uh, that Sean's character is going to be a plumber. Yeah, yeah. nope. That's I wrote down the same note. <laughs> yeah, like, of course. All these pl- the plumber jokes. All these classes. But I think we're going to get a lot of those. We're going to get a lot of the... Uh, um, you know, making fun of Sean for being poor kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These especially in the first first or second season. Yeah. Jokes yeah. that just uh I guess people thought were funny at the time. I don't know how someone didn't say, hey, this is this seems you know, rude. Yeah. You know, this one didn't bother me as much because it's coming from Minkus. Like, you know, this sort of the idea that that Minkus thinks he's better than Sean right. uh, doesn't bother me as much because Minkus is uh, in every other context the underdog. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what right, I mean? Right, so right. It, I, I sort of saw it as like, yeah, that is something that he could attack Sean for. But yes, that you know, it, it, it didn't strike me as like the audience is necessarily going to be laughing at plumbers as much as laughing at the this kid's this little nerd snobbery. Do you right. know what I mean? Well, like, it's that, not like that. I mean, you could also, I guess, say you could turn it around where it's like Minkus would never be bullied. Like, he's like, I don't care that I'm tiny. I'm going to throw it back the second that I get it. So, I mean, coming from that standpoint, it's actually very cool. It's just the way he they chose to have him do it was a little strange. Also, plumbers make great money. Huge money. (laughs) Let's let's call a plumber right now and hopefully you'll get one in a week and it's going to cost a fortune because they're very skilled and it's they make a ton of money. Yeah, so doesn't land. Okay. doesn't Um, land. And Sean calls him a suck up. Corey then falls asleep on his test paper. Mr. Feeney collects it and he has only filled out one question. Questioned? Questioned? One question. One question. One question. Well, that was a, that's the funniest joke of the scene, by the way. Well, you've well, you only answered one question and you answered it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what do you think I'm going to give you? I thought that was a very funny, funny joke. Yeah. 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 Fajita, si, senor. <laughs> si, senor, yes. Um, uh, he, so he says that the reason he fell asleep is because he was staying up late to watch the baseball game with his dad. And then, yeah, we we also get the reveal that the Nobel Prizes were given out the night before and Minkus had stayed up. He watched that himself and he's fresh fresh as a daisy. Fresh as a daisy. Uh, Lee Morris is funny. He is so funny. He is very funny. I'd like to very quickly, just very briefly go back to the scene before because we didn't touch on, I thought Rusty's transition to the joke of you can never tell your mom was, was also very funny. 
Mm-hmm. That was a that was a good run there where he went from no your mom could to yeah she can never find out about this. That was a, I, that was a funny joke I thought. It's yeah. funny I actually didn't quite understand it because at first it was like you know, your mom, he starts with your mom can never find out about yeah. this. And then he says, you know, cause it's father son bonding. And then he pauses and he's like, no, she can never know about yeah, this. Cause I think in his head, that's what I liked was in his head. He was kind of like, well, maybe it'd be okay. Yeah. No, this she'll never, she can never oh, okay. find out. He about was like this. trying yeah. to find a way where maybe she could know if we called it father son bonding. Right. And okay. then he's like, yeah, no, this is never, this gonna is never going to work. Yeah, I thought okay. that was funny. Sorry. It is. No, it's cute. I, I, I love them. I love the moment between the two of them, but I did talk about it. I was like, hi, I wonder is this supposed to be, was there supposed to be some double entendre here I'm not picking up on? No, but I don't no. think, no. Not like the grounded. Yes, grounded. Which is a great double entendre. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll when he that. says that, yeah. We'll when he, that. okay. So um, we're now back at the house in the living room. Corey comes downstairs and like a total doof, probably because he's tired, he completely <laughs> forgets that he's not allowed to talk about the game what? right in front of his mother. What? He says, Dad, we were I, I failed the test because I was staying up late with you watching a game and we see Rusty doing the pointing like she's right there. And um, then he, Alan, gets grounded. Gets grounded, which is which is a very funny joke. Yeah. Well, which led to the awkward moment from my son who was watching it with me saying... Well, how can he get grounded? Oh, oh gosh. I hope you said when a man and woman are really in love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just totally avoid it. I just try to move on. I was like, but I'm, I'm not going to get into this. Yeah, um, no. Wow. Uh, that's, yeah. So that's a very. Very, very funny though. That yeah. was a funny joke. And that is one of those jokes where you don't get it when you're 12, 12 seven, years old. But man. Seven. Yeah, or seven. And then as an adult, you're like, that's a funny joke. And they did it in a way, too, where even the way, you know, is that true? Can she ground you? Well, in in some ways, yeah, yes. In a certain you know, way. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, yeah. It's, right. It was it was well it was well handled. I thought so, too. Um, OK, so Alan says, fear not. I'm going to go into the backyard, not the side yard, the backyard. Uh-huh. And I'm going to talk to Feeney and I'm going to get him to let Corey take a makeup test. And we all can probably guess how that's going to go. He goes into the backyard and Feeney is there uh, and he says, yeah, I'm willing to talk to you about it. He explains the situation. I felt like as a parent, I would have never had any of this dialogue with Corey standing there. If I were right. going to talk to Mr. Feeney, oh, I get that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. fact that Corey is there from the beginning, in my mind, is going to put Feeney in a situation where... Am I going to I'm going to then seem like to my student who I have to sit in class with that his father has power from to adjust what I can do. So I I, the whole time I was like, oh, make him go inside. You're not going to have a successful conversation with your son. No, but this is the cheat that uh, the show still at this point is really from Corey's perspective. Right. And I don't think you could have done this scene without Corey being present for it. Yeah. You know, I think later on in the show, it'll get to that point. But like we've talked about, Ben is in every scene. Yeah. And that's actually, he is an audience surrogate. It's his journey. Every one of these episodes. Yeah. And so I don't think you could get rid of Corey. Corey has to be there for this, to witness the tension and the difference you know, um, and to witness which, his dad getting brought down by the same foil who brings down yes, everything in his yes, life. Yeah, it, it, yes. it does give pe- uh, Peeny. <laughs> it gives <laughs> it gives Mr. Peeny. It gives Mr. Feeney a uh, a whole nother level of power. It really yeah. does. It takes him up a whole nother notch because it's like, oh wow, he he can even do that to my dad. Yeah, my dad. Yeah, uh, yeah. It does yeah. in Corey's eyes. He's just becomes even more giant, which is kind of yeah, an interesting way to look it's, at it's it. Feeney's intelligence and cultural authority versus dad's social skills right yeah. and like dad's so cool and easygoing and fun and charming and mr feeney is just so you know tough and the fact that those two go mano y mano in this scene is great I th- and it's, they do i mean it gets to the point where you know alan thinks he's gonna walk out there and just be yeah. like all right i'll explain it to him it's no big deal and you see his face like wait i don't i don't understand what the big deal is yeah why are and you they kind of go at each other a little bit i it's know gr- it's great i mean it really is great now, we have to keep in mind this is 8 30 on a friday night in a kid show right and there's two adults kind of snapping at each other a little bit which yeah. you, you yeah. don't see a whole lot of on, respectfully on, but yes, yes it was yes it was absolutely respectfully it's not like they were going to come to blows but it was like two adults having a conflict yeah uh yeah. and it was interesting to watch that I, two great yeah, actors there's not too. an easy answer there's not an easy answer i yeah. mean and that's i think that is some of the special sauce that make that made Boy Meets World. Yeah. Thing. You the know, gray so, area. It, it, yeah. Like willing to like allow, you know, and we'll talk about where this episode ends up, but willing yeah. to allow this tension to not be resolved easily. Yeah. yeah. Just introduce the tension 
introduce two different adults being right and try and work that out. It's, yeah. It's really That's the nice. thing. That's an interesting way to say it. It's two different adults being right because it's not two different adults being wrong. It's two different adults right. being right, which is kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So Feeney says, no, the F is going to stand. There is going to be no makeup test. He says he's heard every single excuse in his 35 years of teaching for why a student has failed the test. They go back and forth and it becomes kind of a big thing. They go back into the house. This made me laugh out loud. Corey calls Feeney a butt, which doesn't make me laugh out loud. It's funny, but doesn't make me laugh out loud. He, Alan gets on him. Don't you dare. Yep. He is a the, an incredible teacher. Incredible teachers are very yeah. rare. Makes a big deal yes. about it. Corey then leaves the room and Alan calls him a butt. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. laughed out loud. Yeah. Yep. This was this was Indy's favorite part, obviously. <laughs> but I think that, yeah, like seeing that 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 is the magic of you know a, a of introducing tension and showing how a parent, an adult, can have complicated feelings, right? Like yeah. Here, here is the, the, as opposed to the sort of father knows best or the easy answer where it's like one where it's like, no, he's going to tell Corey one thing. And then the second Corey leaves the room, he's going to repeat exactly what Corey said. And it's, I think it's brilliant. It is. It's well, I think so that also funny. happens a lot with parents and kids, I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the kid's out of the room and it's like, God, I hate that guy. You know, it's well, like, this is it's what the Rusty thing. brought up when he was here, you know, which was that, that there is a difference there yeah. there's two different forms of authority there's a parental authority and there's teacher authority and and he was only playing one side of that equation and that is just great i think that yeah. that's such an essential identity of the show at this point yeah it's it's pretty special i like this this fun this fun side of alan that we get yeah. to see yeah. Uh, so Alan sets the dinner table and he ends up having this great conversation with Amy. She one tells him that forks go on the other side. And, uh, again, she's just kind of at this point relegated to household there. Yeah. yeah You're she's, in the, we'll see you when we're in the kitchen, Amy. Yeah, exactly. You'll give us yeah. an apple. You'll tell us how to set the dinner table. <laughs> it would definitely, uh, up until this point, there was, there hadn't been much for Betsy to do. No, she was, mm -mm. no, she hadn't, she wasn't given the same kind of gifts that Rusty had been given with his scripts. Well, Bill, Rusty and Ben are at this point, the only characters that are being delved into at all. Yeah. I mean, in the it's entire true. show, nothing, everybody else, it's like, all right, let's see what those three characters will do. And then somebody will come in and have a line and then somebody will come in and have a line and yep. then that's it. And it's like, yep. let's get back to these guys. So yep. yeah, it was, it was interesting how they, they were starting to create characters, but it was really well, just they those three. They represent the, the, the strongest pitch of, at this point, of right. the show, which right, was right, that right. your teacher lives next door, right? Like, right. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. does that mean? What does yeah. it mean when you have a little fence between your dad you know, your home right. life and your teacher. And, and, right. and so they're playing that out. And I think, right. You know, but the I show think, hasn't moved on from that yet. But I, I mean, I think today, if you were to do the same thing today, it, you could easily, and maybe it would even be more interesting, have exactly the same storyline, except it's Amy that got him up to watch the baseball game. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It was, it's just, it was very much, it's still very male centric where it's like, why couldn't the mom have kept him up too late to do something? You know what I mean? So it was like, that's, that's where the change comes for me, where it's kind of like, yeah. I see what they were doing, but, and then it's like, she's going to explain to him why he's wrong in the kitchen while yeah. letting him know, you know, where the forks go. It's like, okay. Yeah. She <laughs> says, you know, you can't just change all of your plans so that you're able to spend time with Corey. So you can't basically mess up Corey's life because that's what the timing that works out best for your schedule. You know, watching the mm -hmm. late night game worked best for, for Alan. And so he got Corey up so that it fit into his day-to-day -day life. And that's then what ultimately ended up ruining Corey's school life. So Lenny comes back into the Matthews house while Amy and Alan are kissing and he acts like it's a real catastrophe. He's giving a Amy mouth to mouth resuscitation. Uh, Lenny says there's a problem at the store again. And Alan says there is an assistant manager who, to assist the manager, not just to come and tell the manager every time there is a problem. Uh, Alan tries to go out and play ball with Corey, but Lenny says they put the lighter fluid next to the rotisserie chicken. And that lets Alan know that there may be a fire at the store. This and is also to me, I remember this joke. This joke, me too. I, I remember too. this joke. I don't know why. Is it a good joke or is it just that it's so, because I might I be think too it's clever a by great half. great joke. How much of the store is left? Stuh. 
so funny. I think that is a phenomenal joke. I, I think it I holds up. I, I definitely heard it and I was I remembered it, but I also was like, does this work or do I just think it's funny because I remember it? Like, I, no, I think yeah. I think it works great. I really do. I think it's a no. very clever joke. I think we should do a poll online. Okay, okay thumbs, let's do that. This script, by the way, was written by Michael Jacobs, April Kelly, and Jeff Manel. Whose joke do you think that was? If you had to guess, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I'm I would just say that's a Michael joke. You think that's a Michael I do. joke? I it's do. the most Michael joke. I yeah. think it. I think it's a Michael joke. I think that is a very clever St- joke. How much of the store is left? Stuff. St- it's very funny. <laughs> I, I wrote it down. <laughs> a, I loved it. I just, and I remembered it before it happened. I turned to my wife and I said, oh, there's a great joke coming up. And I yeah. know I ruined it for her by saying there's a great joke. But I remember the fact that I even love this joke. Yeah. We really oh, should have so asked good. Bill and Bonnie what their memories of April were. Oh, geez. We forgot about that. We missed that. an opportunity yeah. to talk about our, our, our April Kelly. Oh, yeah. Our long lost April Kelly. Our long lost April Kelly. That's all right. All right. So uh, we get that great joke. How much of the store is left? Stuck. Stuck. And then Alan knows he has to go. He has to go to the store. We move into the living room and Alan gets the opportunity to tell Corey that he has had a great talk with Amy. He realizes that he was wrong and that Mr. Feeney was right. And he says he would love to be able to stay home and hang out with Corey all the time, but that's just not possible because apparently the family has gotten used to eating. Gotten used to eating. And that Feeney is right. So then we move back into the backyard and Corey is playing with his tennis ball and it goes over the fence into the backyard. Truly the mm-hmm. worst uh, fake right? tennis ball hit <laughs> well, in the history not, of tennis ball hits. Not only that, but the way David Trainer was very clever with the way he shot this, because if you actually like... The, ang- the they did it. A, they did a really good job of making. You're just focused on the Allen, the Matthews family side right, of the yard. Right. You see the ball go over, and then you only see one little corner of Feeney's backyard, and then go back over to just seeing the Matthews backyard. And Corey hop over, and if you then when you pull back the camera and we see where Bill is, it would have been impossible <laughs> to not, for to Corey not to have not seen him the entire he's time. He's a foot away. He's a foot away. <laughs> he's robe. sitting in a robe. It's pretty well lit. They tried to yeah. make it look dark, but if <laughs> you really do have to think about like, wait, how would he have not seen him? You probably, the, but the way David Trainer shot it, you do kind of buy that he didn't see him until he hops over, I but it's it, impossible. Though. Feeney's sitting there. He's set up two, as Bill would say, chaise longs mm-hmm. next to each other. <laughs> With a full tray, like he's got he's got the whole thing laid out in a tray next to him. And it just, Ben, everybody who has ever in their life hit a tennis ball on a racket, you hold the racket straight up and you hit the tennis ball up in the air. The all of a sudden just turning the racket yeah. sideways so it goes into the other yard is like, oi, okay. that's that, I know I know we got to get there, but yikes. And then it was, and it was like, oh, and look who's six inches away. Look who's right there behind me. Mr. Fee. Unbelievable! <laughs> yeah, because no, the- I mean, this is the degree of realism with sitcoms, right? It was. Yeah. It's, it's just, what you have this to is do. Why, but this is why the forum I don't think is as popular anymore. It's because we've come to ex- you know we don't we don't want our sitcoms to be as cartoony or as as unrealistic. We like the idea of realism. Well, that's know? I mean that's the thing. I'm so I'm literally as as we speak. I'm I'm watching um, which I know I should have watched a while back is WandaVision, mm. um, which is uh, you know the Marvel show about about uh, Wanda and which starts and, in the sitcom, and Vision. Right? No, the whole thing is about every episode is a different era of sitcom. So it starts in a 50s sitcom. The next episode goes to a 60s sitcom. Then it's a 70s sitcom. And they're hitting every trope along the way. And so it's funny that the, my next episode is the 90s sitcom. And I'm waiting to see exactly. But oh, we were man, just in the fun. 80s episode. And it's like it literally starts with like the family ties. It's it's you see Wanda and Vision together and they're painting their picture like the, the opening title sequence. And so they're hitting every trope. And, yeah. and it is you do have those kind of things. But part of me thinks that's why it doesn't work anymore. Part of me thinks that's what people want to see again is that kind of let me just escape for 22 minutes. And I know a lot of it is cheesy and it's going to be moments like this where it's like, Mr. Feeney, I didn't see you there three inches away, but people want to experience that again. So uh, we'll see. But yeah, it was that kind of like, oh, and he's out there and it's perfectly set up for another person to sit down next to him even yeah. though he lives alone <laughs> you know it's like what okay why yeah, why two? would he have brought two chairs uh, out yeah you got the two chairs and all that it was very interesting yeah um so he goes over the fence and he's mr feeney's there he's having a drink he invites Corey to sit down uh and have a drink with him and this little ben mischievous pouring the drink in great. the glass is is very 
like classic i remember ben yeah you know just um little devil in his eyes uh having fun pouring that and he played it perfectly too the whole kind of look of like i can't believe he, is he gonna really let me do this is yeah. he gonna really let mm -hmm. me do this i thought it was yeah, it's was like the pilot with him dancing and trying yep. to get out of detention it's he, like the same yeah. sort of yeah. exactly and ben i love had some moments that were pretty darn good he i really love did. um bill's <laughs> bill's look of like Mm, you want a big drink huh? like <laughs> bill like sees him doing it and acknowledge like just kind of gives this little laugh like an inside chuckle of oh uh, you're gonna pour the whole thing in there huh uh it's very cute um and then he reveals that it's apple juice and that mr feeney only has one glass of claret claret with dinner with dinner yeah. and isn't it like once a year it's like at thanksgiving uh, something like that i think he yeah, says yeah, 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 yeah claret at thanksgiving um and then this scene is <laughs> just again Magical. bill puts on a clinic yeah but how yeah. much how much different does the scene play to you now knowing what we know just talking to bill and bonnie about how mm. bonnie said no bill you could tell when i when she said when i was looking at it i could tell that bill was essentially talking to himself yeah as yeah. a young actor uh, that, yeah. to me, kind of changed the whole scene again. I mean, the scene was amazing, but n knowing that moment where it is, it's like, oh, wow, he was a child actor, and now he's, t it's that whole, it, w it was amazing to me. J that gave me chills when I heard that. Yeah. yeah, he, so Bill, Mr. Feeney, tells the story that there was a war going on in Europe when he was a child, and he couldn't have the things he wanted, buttered toast and sneakers. And his mom would tell him that he couldn't have those things because there was a war going on in Europe. And so all he wanted was for the war to end so that he could have the things that he wanted. And he prayed every night for the war to end. And then he heard at school that Truman that night was going on the radio to announce the end of the war. And he just so badly wanted to stay up and listen to the president basically give him the answer to his prayers. And his dad told him that, no, tomorrow is a school day. I don't want you up with me. And he said he really what it was about. Corey uh, assumes, well, that means your dad really knew the value of education. And Feeney says, no, he just didn't want me hanging out with him and his drinking buddies. The idea that they mm -hmm. added the word drinking mm -hmm. to it changed the entire kind of history of like you, you instantly got. It, Mr. Feeney's dad. Yeah. Backstory. Feeney yeah, backstory. That's all you need. Well, it's also established. That. Well, you already have, it's also the counterpoint to, or it's the second part of only having one glass of Exactly. Well, yes. You yes. Know, that you've established that he is a temperate drinker and barely ever drinks. Here he is. He's got a snifter of apple juice. That's yeah. his, yep. his nighttime treat. And then you get the payoff, which is that his dad was clearly drinking too much with his buddies and not spending time with him. That yeah. is that's wonderful. And I, I never remembered that. No, I, mean, me I did remember the speech. I remembered Bill giving, like, I remembered lines from this, um, like, you know, the war in Europe, because I remember being slightly confused by it, thinking he was from Europe. Right. Uh, <laughs> because I thought Bill was British. Right. Uh, which we talked about. But um, yeah, no, I remember this monologue. I remember, and it's it's really touching. It's a really, you know, it's touching in, in all the, the, the backstory with Feeney and getting a sense of his humanity. It's also Feeney admitting he's wrong. Yes. You know, yeah. and we haven't had much of that on this show. Like... Uh, even, you know, this is this is one of the few moments where all of that sort of like monologue Feeneyism is actually in service of admitting that, you know, Corey's dad was right. Um, now, is that great. what he's now? Here's my question. And again, just to, is that what he's doing? I'm asking because it's like, it, did yeah. he admit that he's like, wrong or does he, is no. he, what he's saying is like, he wished he didn't have to do what he did to Corey, but he did have to do what he did. To yes. Corey. Like but he's, he's still also, not going to let him take the test. No, right. but he's also admitting he, like, that's what's so great about what, you know, what we were saying earlier that both the adult, both, both the adult authority figures are, are both right. And they're also both, both wrong. You know, like they can both, all four things can be true. Right, you know, right, like he, right. it's, it's well, up to Corey to sort of navigate these relationships and to recognize that, yes, he can't take the test again, but also, you know, he's his gonna, dad should have woken him up. Yeah, he should he she he should have a relationship with his dad because Mr. Feeney also regrets not having a relationship right, with his right. dad. And, you know, his dad's going to tell him Mr. Feeney was right. Mr. Feeney's going to tell him his dad was right. Then they're both going to say they're both wrong. You know, like this is a really it's nice. It's nuanced. It's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's ambiguous. It's it's the world is 
the world and you know you got well it's the equivalent again of adding the word drinking you could have gotten exactly the same thing from that speech if he said my dad didn't want me up with him and his buddies but by adding the word drinking you had a whole nother layer thrown on to the thing and like Ryder said it throws you right back to just a few minutes before where you find out he's a very tempered and controlled drinker yep um and you know i do think that that's actually the he's admit he's saying that he was wrong um to have acted as though Alan should not have woken him up. His dad, right. you can, you can, he, he's basically saying your dad did the right thing, waking you up and you did the right thing watching the game. But I also still did the right thing by failing you. I'm, right. I, I right, shouldn't right, still yeah, give yeah. you another opportunity right. to do it. Sometimes it's, even if you know the outcome is going to be an F, it's still the right thing right. to do. It's worth it. For, right. Exactly. It's sure. worth it for the relationship and for that sure. bonding. You're yeah. only going to get that one thing. So it is. It's it's really yeah. nuanced parenting. And Well, um, my, yeah. dad, my dad did that to me. There would be once or twice a year for, you know, probably from the time I was in the third grade to the time I was in the seventh or eighth grade, my dad would pull me out of school. We would drive to New York City and go see a baseball game. Mm. I mean, that was it. Was like yeah. he, we would go to see the Mets. We would go to see the Yankees. We'd go uh, mm. sometimes to Boston and see the Sox. But it was like I'd miss a day of school, and he's like, "No, I'm just going to pick you up, and we're just going to go see a baseball game." Wow. And that, I mean, I remember, and he's right. I remember that more than I remember whatever the hell I was going to learn in the yes. fourth grade that day. You know, it was you know stuff like that is hugely important. So that's, I mean, yeah, that's you do remember that stuff. So on this front, should we uh, play a little too much shirts? Too much shirts. Yes, too much shirts, Tell me about the time with your son. This was an interesting one because uh, for whatever reason, Indy wanted to talk about acting. (laughs) Uh, And uh, so our pregame discussion ended up being more about acting. And and just so you know, he's got dinosaurs on the brain right now because Jurassic uh, Jurassic World has has brought dinosaurs back into our lives uh, big time brilliant uh, but then brilliant uh, yeah this ended up being a, a the post the post conversation i kept trying to bring him back to what the episode was actually about and uh yeah you'll you'll see do you think being an actor is cool yeah what do you think it's like to be an actor i don't know it's kind of hard Maybe you'll have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Do you think you'd be a good actor? I don't know. Do you think there's anything different about you as far as the way you play make-believe or do not, voices? Not really. Can we hear your uh, T-Rex roar? Really? Yeah, let's hear it. And go. <coughs> All right, now let's hear a raptor. Oh, please do the teenage girl. No. <laughs> Where did you come up with this? I don't know. I just came up with it. Mom, he's milking me. Oh, my God, Scarlett. A boy just texted me. Let's watch episode 103. All right, any thoughts, Indy? It was crazy. There was a lot going on. The Corey guy didn't talk. To the Sean dude, which is you, but we came from just the mustache guy, Beanie. And then there were a lot of jackets. He stays up late with his dad watching a baseball game and fails a math test. So, what's the difference between Mr. Feeney and Corey's dad? Wait, what's Corey's dad's name? Alan. Alan Grant? <laughs> no. Alan Matthews. Probably an old man by now, because he was already old, older than you. He's the exact same age I am right now. Oh, so he's now probably like 80, 60. Mr. Feeney's a butt. He does say that, but then what does Mr. Feeney end up telling Corey? Does he say your dad shouldn't have let you stay up that late? Yeah, like how right now it is 9 o'clock. So I should be putting you to bed is what you're saying? Let's see what time it is. It is 9.56. But we really should be going to bed. Maybe maybe that's the lesson we should take from this episode is that it's time for you to go to bed. Why? It's actually three hours. So it's actually right now like six. No, seven, right? Six. Let's go to bed. Oh, man. That's I couldn't awesome. believe it. We ended up exactly in the situation. He could not figure out math because he was too tired. What oh, time man. was it? I mean, what time? What, what was the time zone? Was it three hours? 
or two? Yeah, we had changed from L.A. to New York, so we had adjusted three hours. So oh, my Normally God. he goes to bed at, at 7.30 or 8, but we stayed up to watch Boy Meets World that night. Oh, so that's so funny. I kept him up. Yeah. God, that's well, funny. First of all, he does, as a voiceover actor, he does, the voice is pretty well. Yeah, uh, he's getting there. So yeah, it's I mean good. that raptor is incredible. Yeah. He's going to end up like a uh, like a Fred Tattish or one of the, one of these uh, men and women that uh, Frank Welker, who it's like every time you hear a dog or a cat or any kind of sound, it's actually somebody doing that. It's a guy. It's a guy yeah. doing that. So he yeah. just obsesses over it, you know. And this is what I was trying to say to him about acting. It's like you know, he's just he's just got that make believe thing where he goes into it and he cares about the quality of the sound and and then he just improvs like that teenage girl thing. Then I just don't you know, he does this. So, so it's pretty funny. funny that, but but yeah, I love that he's act, asking me if I think I would be an actor as, as we're watching the show on which I was an actor. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think I did back then? How do you think you'd be as an actor, Dad, yeah, if you yeah, were an actor? Exactly. Uh, thank you, Indy. Yes, thank you. He noticed too much jackets. Too much jackets this <laughs> Too many much time. jackets and robes. Wow. Too much shirts. Uh, so at the end of the scene, Mr. Feeney says that if he did have a son and the opportunity presented itself to keep his son up late, he would. And and I think it's very sweet that he Lovely. he says, I did well up, fully welled up. Tears did not fall yet. But you well. But I welled up. But you well. Did we mm. ever find out? And again, we'll get into this as we go further in the series. Did we ever find out why Mr. Feeney never had kids? I don't know. I don't remember that either, if that was actually ever really addressed, if why he never had children. You know what also occurred to me during this episode is, did Eric have Mr. Feeney? Did we ever establish that in the show? I Yes. I think we do. I think we do, we do? actually establish that later in the because day. Because I, yeah, I was yeah. waiting for there to be a reference to, like, I remember your older brother, Cole. Guys, you please, know, because I feel like that's a standard exist. thing. It's Mr. Peeney. It's Mr. Peeney. Yeah. Uh, Correct pronunciation yes. is Peeney. And uh, we, uh, you know, it's because Eric didn't exist at this point. It was walk yeah. in, say a line. Walk. I mean, Sean was kind of the same. You, you walk in, you say a line. You walk out and the show goes on. Be the butt of a plumber joke. That's what, that's what, yeah, exactly. Or you, or for me, it was like, yeah, Lenny, of course I know you. And then you walk out and then, you know, that's it. Um, so we, they just hadn't established us at all yet. So it's just, we're, we're getting there slowly as characters, slowly, but slowly. Mm. Slowly, but slowly. Exactly. Uh, okay, so then we are back in Eric and Corey's room. Corey asks Amy what's going on with Alan thinking Feeney is right. Feeney thinking Alan is right. And, um... Then Alan comes in and Corey says, well, what's, you know, why are you saying goodnight to me? What's going to happen if something exciting happens on the TV tonight? And Alan says that no matter what, he will find out in the morning because his dad will always be there in the morning to tell him what mm. went on the night before. Very sweet. And then yes. we get the moment where Corey references that Alan is no longer grounded. And he says, yeah, he's not coming back tonight. Yeah. And I was creeped out. Yeah. It's a little, I, I, I was too. I've got to be totally honest with you. The 12 year old kid lying in bed going, my, he's not coming back my tonight. My dad's getting something tonight I, is a little weird to me. Kind of weirded me out. Yeah. I, I couldn't figure out, by the way, also how he put it together all of a sudden. Like he, early in the episode, he, he was, he had no idea. He didn't know what yeah. it meant. And, and now, now I guess he does. And I kept trying to think, is there an alternative interpretation of this line that I'm missing and I'm going to a place that's not? No, I think you're absolutely right. I also think kind of the parents in front of the kid going, am I still grounded? Like, let's go talk yeah. about it. was a little like, wow, this you're okay. Could you do that in the hallway? Maybe <laughs> like, do we, do we need to do that right in front of the 12 year old kid? S it's so funny. I, I, I wonder how much we're going to run up against this with the show, you know, like, uh, and I, I don't, I don't know how much of it is the times changing is us getting older. Uh, but I definitely think that and in, in some ways, I think it has to go back. It goes back to the idea that that network television was a bigger tent, you know, like yeah. it, it had to appeal to grownups and kids at the same time. Sure. And uh, having a slightly risque but still pretty buried joke was a sweet spot that like right. a network television kids show. Now, sure. a kids show would never make any references mm -hmm. to this on no. Disney Channel or Nickelodeon no. because that's where those kids shows have gone to exist. They don't they don't have to appeal to adults in the same way. Um, well, look at what Bill said to look what what Bill what Bill and Bonnie talked about last time was that the and I think we we had this on our show as well where 
the the writers and producers of St. Elsewhere would always try to quote slide one in or slip one in where he talked about yeah. the, t- the tulips on the organ where it's yeah. that I think there were times where Michael Jacobs and the writers would try to do that as well. Like, let's see what yeah. we can get away with. Let's see how far yeah. we can go. Let's see. And yeah. I think that's a pretty common thing for writers and producers to do. I mean, I'm way we've already talked about this off mic and it's not going to happen probably until next season really with this show but you know like i'm i'm incredibly weirded out by how much making out there was oh yeah ton and like that makes me way more uncomfortable than like the joke that the parents are possibly making love in another room uh i'm more weirded out by the fact that we're going to have to watch episodes where 13 14 year old writers making out with 13 14 year old girls for like entire episodes like that's weird to me eric and i and you don't see that on television anymore so i do think the culture has changed right or I don't know. Maybe it's still a, a thing that happens. I, but it was definitely a, like the idea that we would kiss so much on this show and yeah. that audiences would do the Whoa! like that yeah. was like a part of our culture. And, you know, watching that with my son is going to be a little weird. Yeah, yeah. that's well, going to be a little uncomfortable. We both went through that. There was like, oh, let's give Sean and Eric just girls every week. And it's like, oh, OK. And there was it was it was every week for a while. And yeah. it was yeah. really kind of weird. Yeah, it did. It, that's going to be going to be jarring. Well, Next episode, mm-hmm. we have episode number 104, Corey's Alternative huh. Friends. It's With a the, very is that special an guest one? Is that an important is episode that a, in the show? A I don't know very why. special guest pops up, really? the reveal of Topanga Lawrence. I don't think the character's going to last. I'm, yeah. I'm going to be honest. I, don't <laughs> I think, think Topo Gigi any, is only going to last yeah. one, one I, mean, I don't see episode. a future for no, this girl. I don't think it's going to have any, any kind of effect on the show at all, frankly. We also have a very special guest joining us that week for uh, David Trainer, the director of legendary director, legendary Amazing. director who not only directed uh, Corey's Alternative Friends and the episode we just recapped today, but every single episode other than the pilot in season one and season two. And two, yeah. He came back to direct another episode in uh, like season six, maybe season seven. So he did a total of forty-five episodes of Boy Meets World, and was somehow taller when he came back. Six, he's six seven, isn't six he? Six foot seven. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable tall how man. tall that man is. Yes. Uh, so anyway, that is next week. Uh, episode number 104, Corey's Alternative Friends, originally aired October 15th, 1993. And uh, yeah, I had a really great time with you guys. Make sure I to follow too. us on Instagram at Pod Meets World Show. And you can email us your thoughts, your opinions. You can scream at us. Tell us what you want to hear more of. Uh, tell us your thoughts about um, Bill and Bonnie too. Yeah. And, and I think this is a good time. If you guys... Have any stories about what Mr. Feeney has meant to you or a Feeney character in your life, a teacher that has impacted you, or if you think you have now become that teacher in somebody else's life, please send us your stories about what Mr. Feeney means to you or the Feeney character in your life. And you can email us at podmeetsworldshow at gmail.com. Also, we got shirts, baby. March, March, March. March. We've got too much shirts that. and we've got hair and you can get it over at podmeetsworldshow.com. Oh, and we want to do Ryder. Good idea. Uh, what did you, did you think stuh is a funny joke? Oh yeah. We'll, we'll do that on the Instagram. I think stuh we'll is a funny joke. Let's I think see. that's a great idea. How, think. Uh, how much of the store is left? Stuh. Stuh. Is that funny? We're going to do a poll <laughs> on Instagram. Funny. And I just once more want to say merch because it's a great word to say. It's such a great word. Uh, also, we're putting out feelers. If you were an extra on the season, yes. the first season of Boy Meets World, and you stuck around through the entire first season, please yeah. reach out to us. We'd want to talk to you. Yeah, we do. I want to hear from you because we had we had a, a stable of extras that were in the classroom. The classroom repeated- extras. Yeah, and, we'd and love unfortunately, to we did not stay in touch. Uh, but yeah, th- through the years, I would say up until, gosh, I, I swear up until like the fourth season, we had a, a few recurring extras. And did I would love anybody to go from school, like follow you through school? Meaning like, did you think anybody started at the the very beginning yeah. and all went through the college years as well? Was there anybody no, that was there the, the whole time? College years, but uh, definitely we had we had some recurring um, extras that, like I remember, we would hang out with all the time. Now, granted, they would only come in on tape nights, right? Like right, we right. went, so it would only be one night a week. Well, I remember Dustin, in. wasn't that his name? Yeah, well, Dustin, Dustin. Dustin was yeah. one. So Dustin, if you're if you're listening, reach out. Because- yeah, reach out to us. Pod meets world show at gmail or you can get to us through the Instagram as well. Um, this was really fun. This was fun. Oh, you know what else? I just yeah. realized this was the first episode where um, we. 
see Corey wearing Jordan 8s. This was kind of the start of Corey's. Uh, <laughs> what are Jordan 8s? Jordan 8s. No shoes. idea what she's talking oh, about. I don't know. No, no, no it's, idea it's, either. It's, I was like, what? Listen, for the first, especially the first two seasons, the shoes, it's become now, especially, it's become like Boy Meets World is a show they go back to it to see the shoes that definitely Ben is wearing really? and that sometimes that Ryder is wearing. So are um, Jordan 8s special they're just shoes? Co- no, they're just cool. They're oh, Jordan. Okay. Jo- they're just Jordan tennis shoes, but they're. So they're, I should have kept my shoes. Is yes, what you should have kept your shoes. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember exactly how many times you wore them because I think they 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 were expensive too. So they may it may have been one of those things where Sean wasn't wearing them very right, often, right, right. but but Corey was because of the plumber thing. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's it, park it gets you guys. Are, you got your pictures have been posted on like wow. sh- on shirt uh, Instagram. I'm sh- not sure sure. Uh, <laughs> shoes Instagram, like you know sneaker Instagram. Wow, yeah, it's pretty cool. Sneakergram, sneakergram. Right. There you go. Wow. Inst- All right, Instagram. Remember, we're changing the name. It is it is now Instagram. <laughs> Mr. Instagram. Mr. Peeny Instagram. Mr. Peeny loves Instagram. All right. Well, this has been a real joy. Looking forward to seeing you guys next week. We love you all. Pod dismissed. Pod Meets World is an iHeart podcast produced and hosted by Daniel Fischel, Will Friedle, and Ryder Strong. Executive producers, Jensen Karp and Amy Sugarman. Executive in charge of production, Danielle Romo. Producer and editor, Tara Sudbach. Producer, Lorraine Vurez. Engineer and Boy Meets World superfan, Easton Allen. Our theme song is by Kyle Morton of Typhoon. Follow us on Instagram at Pod Meets World Show or email us at podmeetsworldshow at gmail.com. 